yeah. for special educational yeah. needs. Yeah. Brian Hammersley from Bedworth wondered how to account for an increase in cases. And does anyone know why this is increasing so rapidly, these figures? Is it something in the water? Member for Bulkington and Whitestone, Jeff Morgan, suggested tougher questions should be asked when assessing children. Not automatically accepting the plea of a mother saying that little Willie has got ADHD when in actual fact little Willie is just really badly behaved. Councillor Claire Golby, who represents Arbury near Nuneaton, questioned whether the increase could be linked to social media use. I've seen sites where families are swapping tips on how to get their children diagnosed. Is it something in the water? The comments of outraged parents like Mike from Studley. He spent months arranging assessments and support at his own cost for his nine-year-old son James, who has dyslexia. Absolute anger that politicians, local government in charge of providing funding for special needs have such archaic views on uh, the needs of children in the area. In a statement, the council say they take very seriously the offence, upset and distress the comments have caused. All three councillors have since apologised, but a Warwickshire MP says that's not enough. I think it exposes um, a complete failure to appreciate the scale of a problem and a total disrespect for the, the families involved, and that's why I think on this occasion they should resign. A petition online also calling for their resignations has attracted more than 15,000 signatures. The council's begun an investigation into the three councillors' comments. Giles Latch and BBC Midlands today, Warwickshire. Two people have been arrested following the death of a baby boy in Warsaw. The six-month-old was found at a home on Monday. A man and a woman held in connection with the death have since been released on bail. Police say a post-mortem examination will take place in due course. The mayors of the West Midlands and Greater Manchester have announced plans to improve rail connectivity between the two regions following the scrapping of the planned HS2 link. Andy Street and Andy Burnham say one option could be a new lower speed line funded by private finance. It comes as a report from MPs says that plans to press ahead with the HS2 line between London and Birmingham represent poor value for money. Campaigners have been taking the government to court today, accusing it of failing to protect the River Wye from agricultural pollution. The BBC has discovered that no farmers have yet been prosecuted for allowing soil and muck to get into the watercourse since new laws came into place in 2018. Nicola Goodwin has more. They've come from across Herefordshire, Gloucestershire and Wales to take on the Environment Agency, the government, as they say it's failed to protect the River Wye. It's a David versus Goliath battle with celebrity backing. Oh, I've been absolutely furious about the whole thing. We, as the public, put our trust in a system, a system of government, of politics, of regulation, of oversight that would protect us and protect the environment and we've been cheated that system has failed. River Action believes the Environment Agency hasn't enforced the regulations designed to keep our streams and rivers clean and has therefore acted unlawfully. Almost 70% of the wise pollution comes from agriculture, muck spread on fields which washes into the river. That causes algae, which starves the plants and wildlife of oxygen. There are 20 million chickens being farmed in the River Wye Valley at any one time, and that's a lot of muck. Here at the Witten Estate near Kington, they use the muck from half a million birds to produce energy to heat the sheds. They sell the excess fertiliser to other regions of the UK where it's needed. They're searching for solutions that say both the public and the government need to pay more for British food. We're trying to produce more food all the time for more people without having any negative environmental impact and that's a huge challenge. So we need help to invest in technology to help us do that. The case will last for two days and the judge is expected to give his ruling in a few weeks' time. Nicola Goodwin, BBC Midlands Today, in Cardiff. 
On to football now, and Aston Villa are out of the FA Cup, beaten 3-1 in their fourth round replay against Chelsea. Villa was second best for most of the night, conceding two goals before the break. The visitors made it three with a superb free kick before Moussa Diaby grabbed a consolation goal in injury time. Right, time for the weather and there's a chance of snow for some of you. Shafali has the details. Hello, a very good evening to you. Well, we've got a picture here of swollen rivers over in Herefordshire, but it's not looking good for that part of the world. We've got a warning in place, a yellow warning, and that comes into force from 2 a.m. tomorrow morning, running right through tomorrow. And uh, we could get between 15 to 25 millimetres of rain over a 24-hour period. Plus, we've got amber warnings that come into force from tomorrow morning for Shropshire and uh, Staffordshire. The ice warning is just for uh, Shropshire, but we could get between 10 to 15 centimetres of snow over the highest routes and there's also a yellow warning for snow that uh, encompasses Birmingham and surrounding areas. But this is the Birmingham. area of rain that's moving up from the south later on tonight. On its leading edge it's turning to snow. Quite a cold night as well with lows of just one Celsius and the whole lot shifts northwards through the day tomorrow. A drier end to the day but quite chilly in the north. Highs of just two Celsius. Fingers crossed we don't get too much. Thank you for watching this evening. That's all from us for tonight. Bye bye.